in Northampton. Thread Gold's recovery employs four full-time staff and operates a fleet of tow trucks, dealing with hundreds of seized cars a year. Come to pick your car up, haven't you? Have you got your photographic ID there? One of the oldest pounds in the UK, this husband and wife run operation can store 150 vehicles at any time. Right, Stephen. Yes. Police are running an op today. Oh, bloody hell. Today, they've been booked to assist Northampton police in an ambitious stop and check operation. Police will stop uninsured drivers, drivers with no tax. Sometimes there'll just be a fault with the car, that they'll stop them for the fault, and then that'll throw up the fact that they might not have insurance. There's a lot of police officers out. They think it is going to be very busy. Steve's heading up the recovery operation and will be impounding any cars the police sees. I think at the end of the days, it's easy to condemn what we do. You know, oh, you do this for the police, you take cars off the road. But if that person was actually hit by an uninsured driver, or had a relative killed by an uninsured driver, I think they would have a different view on what we actually do. Better unload the one that was on there. In the city centre, PC David Lee is in charge of operations. As vehicles go past, we'll be uh, looking at them, pulling them in completely at random, and the student officers will be uh, checking the vehicles on the police national computer to check that they've got insurance, MOT. Uh, as well as checking that the drivers have got uh, the relevant licences uh, for the vehicles. 17504. With the high chance of catching wanted criminals, they need to be prepared for angry drivers becoming aggressive. 89.54. This is part of a spray. It's like an irritant capacitant spray, so it's technically counted as a firearm, hence why we have to log it in and out so we know who's got it and how much it weighs, so we know exactly how much we're issuing to each person. Guys, do you want to make your way out? Guys, come outside now, please. So you'll need a high vis and a hat. This op will take over two busy main roads in Northampton, and to boost numbers, they're using the opportunity to train new recruits. Because I think there's loads of people who's driving like uninsured cars, uh, and you know it's only costing the public more money. The public will be quite happy to see us doing this sort of stuff, today. especially with drink drive as well. I think that's that's a big one they the public like to see. Can't wait for it. <laughs> Morning, everybody. As you can see, we've got a couple of lanes that are closed uh, already. Vehicles are going to be coming down here, and in essence, we're just going to be picking vehicles at random and pulling them into the check site. It's estimated vehicle crimes cost the public around £2 billion each year. We do now and again get vehicles that will fail to stop for us. We have had them where they've just gunned it and gone through. Just be very wary of that middle lane. That's, that's going to be the biggest thing that's going to pose us a, a risk and stuff today. And with the coppers poised to check hundreds of cars... Oh, that's a new one. <laughs> ..it's going to be a busy day for the pound. Across the city is another one of Northamptonshire's bustling car pounds. CMG Recovery employs 18 staff and can hold up to 344 cars at any one time. Among the crew are drivers Ashley and Matt, who towed dozens of cars from the streets of the town each week, including this red polo. They come in last Friday, week today, I think. Yes, yeah, so seven days now. So he's got till Friday week, and then his 40 days are up. Northampton the police will authorise us to scrap it, and it will become some sort of drink account. But the car's owner has other ideas. I want to take my car. He's desperate to recover his vehicle after it was seized for not having insurance. Please have been released yet. What? Please have said they've been emailing you because your policy's been declined. No, now I talk with my insurance and he say you go to take your car. The insurance company does not have the authority to tell me to release your vehicle. Only the police do. Hey, you kid me? We get so many people that aren't happy or when they come to basically pay to release their car back to them. We get it so bad here sometimes. We get to a point where we have to call the police because some people just will just kick off, you know, start slamming doors, shouting them abuse at you across the yard because, you know, all they see is that we've taken their car and it's, yeah, your car's in our compound, but it's the police that's taken it, not us. The Pound are not allowed to release any vehicle without police approval 
and after every seizure, the cops check that all insurance, licenses, MOTs and tax are valid. Hey, I have now without uh, the insurance. I will make a money now. Please. You kid me? Oh. What you follow? Police. Yeah, police. Police. For CMG driver Matt, it's an all too familiar story. So the gentleman's turned up. He's quite aggressive. Uh, he's been swearing at the girls. Probably going to kick off again once he finds out that he's still not being released. The driver has purchased insurance, so the police should be telling the pound to give his car back. But they're saying they're still not satisfied with the information from his new insurers. They called me yesterday or, and he said you go to take your car. Mm -hmm. okay. Who? Yeah. This number. This is the private number. What did they say? He said you go to take your car. Okay, you don't need to raise your voice, I'm not deaf. I talk with him and he say you go, you take your car. Oh, you who? Who? With my insurance. You think you've heard every excuse in the book? The, the book's a never-ending book, you know, pages are getting written every day of this book of excuses. We're just here doing a job. We're just picking your car up, storing it for the police, you got to come pay for it back. That's why people get angry, people come up with so many excuses, but it's like, we're not here to judge you, we're just here so you can get your car back. So you called your insurance and they said come and yeah. get your car, okay. It doesn't work like that, it has to be the police that say that you can get your car. Keep screaming at the police down the phone, because you know what it's like, you can hear him. Stood over there listening to him and he was just shouting down the phone at the police. And you could hear the police like, please sir, just calm down, we'll sort it out for you. And then in the end, they just told him no. So what you did, when you spoke to your insurance, if you listen, I'm going to try and help you. You don't try to help me. I'll just walk back off in there, but I'm still stood here trying to help you. So do you want me to help you or not? In Northampton, Car Pound CMG is dealing with an unhappy customer. Can you give me the key? The key? Yeah, from the car. Why? You can be angry with us all you like. We're not the ones that have seized your vehicle. The police have seized your vehicle, you know. Yeah, you've got to pay us to get it back. We've had to recover your vehicle and store it in a secure compound, you know, and that's not free. I want to take my car. How many times have I got to tell you I am not the police? So you need to bring your insurance to say what's going on. I don't understand you. Well, then we've got a problem. See, you want to help me, but you don't help me. You have to do it yourself. You have to help yourself. To add to his rising costs, as a driver only has a provisional license, he isn't allowed to drive his car home. So he's had to fork out extra cash for a tow truck driver to recover it, who has some friendly advice. You broke a lock and car is... It's not disappeared, it's here. I know it's here, but this law is working like that. And stop shouting with call police and you go to jail. No, I'm go to the jail. Three times I've worked police for you. And I've come back out and I've told you what they've said. And the last thing they said was, is that your insurance company are not confirming your insurance. The police need confirmation from the insurance that you're now insured. Without the right paperwork and with no approval from the police, there's nothing the pound staff can do. You turning up and saying, oh, I was insured, blah, 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 it's the police's fault. That doesn't change anything. You know, until we are told by the police, it's our mistake, release it back. That's just the way it is. I think that can end up going to the scrap yard. Yeah, he's only got another few days before he's declared scrap. 14 days. He's got 40 days to can claim it back, pay for it, before the police can scrap it. You know, it's, it's been an expensive week and it still hasn't finished yet. And police is a, it's a rubbish. Rubbish, you know, big rubbish, the police. After spending a lot of time at the pound, the man only has two days left to avoid his car ending up on the scrap heap. Right, all yours. John, gonna go with him, cos there's two. A few miles away, Steve and John are heading into Northampton city centre on call to remove vehicles seized by police 
during their stop and check operation. Yeah, you can get really busy doing these ops. Depends on how many officers they've got out um, and how many sites they're doing it from. We could expect anything from a minimum of six and a maximum of 20, just in the one day, so. When the team arrive, the operation is in full swing. And with multiple police officers operating across two busy roads, it doesn't take long for them to start getting hits. Um, we're just going to step out of the vehicle and just come stand over here for yeah. me. It should take them for a minute, all right? This unlucky young driver has owned his vehicle for a grand total of 20 minutes and has already been stopped. You've just bought the vehicle from Morrison's. Uh, yeah, I've taken the delivery from Morrison's. OK. But you didn't have insurance, and now you're trying to buy the insurance now after being stopped. Yeah, that was a, that was a big mistake, fella. You're doing it now. Right, stop that for now, then. Yeah, just pop your phone back in your pocket. So essentially, what we've got here is the male uh, just bought the vehicle, so he tells us. He hadn't got insurance for it and he's now just tried to buy the insurance after being stopped by police. He said he was going to do it when he got home. However, he's still driving the vehicle um, uninsured, so we are going to be issuing him a ticket and the vehicle's going to get seized today. For car pound boss Steve, after over 43 years of towing and impounding vehicles, nothing comes as a surprise. Yeah, I don't feel sorry for some people because at the end of the day, most people, I think, know they're driving with either no insurance or no tax. You do get the odd one every now and again that probably has genuinely forgot to insure it or not had a letter, but I think most of them probably know. While being pulled after owning the car for just 20 minutes may put this driver in the record books, it's no joke. Every year, uninsured drivers injure 26,000 people and the rest of us end up footing the bill with higher premiums. OK, um, vehicles can get seized. Uh, I'm happy for you to go on your way now, OK? The Threadgold's team have been commissioned to take this car back to the pound. So that 20-minute drive without insurance is going to be a very costly trip. I've not had somebody try to buy insurance yeah. in front of me before. That, that was a first for me, if I'm honest. He's just spent, in essence, of a couple of thousand pounds on the car, and now he's got another probably three, four hundred pounds to pay in fines. Yeah, it's not a great day for him, to be fair. It's a mistake that he's made, and hopefully he doesn't make it again. The trouble you've got with a, like a static hop like that one, once the word goes around, um, it tends to die off a little bit, because people get to know they're down there, and obviously the ones that know they've got no insurance, obviously avoid it, the area, so they don't get stopped. But it still seems quite busy at the minute. Facing a potential fine of £300. Yeah, they have cleared your documents, that's fine. And points on his licence. Later that day... Garris can go, yeah. The 20-minute driver was able to retrieve his vehicle. It's already been a busy day at the Threadgold Pound, but Steve's shift is a long way from being over. Some jobs are easy, some jobs are challenging, but you just have to do them if you can do them. He's heading back to the police op. Can I ask why you don't have your driving license on me? Where officers have discovered the license of this elderly driver has expired. Over a certain age, you have to reapply for your licence and go through a medical just to make sure that you're still fit to drive. Unfortunately, this gentleman's licence has expired and he's never bothered to renew the licence. So technically, he doesn't have a valid UK licence. So unfortunately, um, he won't be able to carry on driving the vehicle. When you hit the age of 70, car licences automatically expire. For it to be renewed, you have to prove you're still fit to drive. And that's something the police are now getting concerned about. I asked him if he wanted to get out of the vehicle. He said, yeah, he'll get some fresh air, in which I asked if he's all right to, to stand there for a bit due to his age. And then he lifted up his trouser and showed me his prosthetic leg. I made 30 of them, and none of them are any very good. Amputees may need specially adapted vehicles, so the police have decided to double-check their database 
and make sure this man's definitely allowed to drive. We pulled into our system on the 2nd of, of August last year. We were pulled over by police officers. Uh, and you were, you were charged with dangerous driving and having had no insurance. And records suggest things may get even more serious for this driver. Yeah, this is from directly magistrate's court that you were charged and convicted on the 27th of September last year, disqualified until the 26th of this month this year. Unfortunately, it's not a case that this gentleman is just expired. He, unfortunately, um, has been, his licence has been disqualified because of a no insurance offence last year. So now we're just weighing up whether it's proportionate to take him to custody. Either way, the car will still be being seized. Driving while disqualified can be punishable by six months in prison. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, not. I've never been done for dangerous driving and I've never been done for no insurance. And that's what they're saying, I've been lost the license for. Somebody's got the wires crossed, haven't they? So it's a trip to the pound for this car. And that's not the only thing that may end up behind bars. Steve and John are busy curbside with the police and they may have more work before the day ends. Out on the streets, another of the Safer Roads crew. So we've got a vehicle that's just pinged up on one of the cameras. Traffic officer Adam Jeskins is on four wheels. He's tracking down illegal vehicles for the Threadgold's team to potentially recover and impound. It's got a, a, a person driving the vehicle potentially that's it's not got a license. We'll, we'll see if we can make a bit of ground to, to catch up with it. The officer doesn't have the exact location, so he's heading to its last known position. There are quite a few traffic lights up on this bit of road, so it may have got held up. We, we may be able to catch it. If he wants the car off the road and at the pound, he needs to catch him fast. In order to report somebody for, for the offence of driving otherwise in accordance with a licence, I have to be able to prove that they were driving um, on a provisional licence without a supervising driver, without L plates on the road. And so unless I really, really unless I stop it on the road and I can't stand in court and, and say hand on heart, yes, I'm absolutely certain. So I need to catch it on the road, really. Okay, but it's not Adam that gets first eyeball on the car. So that Range Rover has just uh, pinged up on one of the cameras heading out of Northampton. So uh, one of my colleagues is not a million miles away from it uh, and has just seen it. Um, so we're going to try and uh, see if we can stop it. Yeah, where are you? With two cars tracking the same vehicle, they're hoping they can catch him. Yeah, Roger, I'm going to swing into the lay-by by Wix's and then I can hop out there. Recent figures show over 14,500 provisional licence holders were prosecuted for being uninsured in 2020, meaning motorists driving without a valid licence keep the car pounds very busy indeed. Yeah. Do you want to come down? Yep, coming round now. So we'll go and deal with, uh, see what we've got going on here. Good afternoon, how are we doing? Your vehicle? The man has been stopped for driving on a provisional license, which means he can only drive with a supervising adult with a valid license and with L plates. Where are you off to today, anyway, nice? No, no, we just came back from doing some shopping. OK, so obviously it's a provisional, so she's got a licence, has she? Uh, no, she doesn't. She doesn't have a licence? I couldn't find any one free from today. Right. You are aware of the requirements yes, to drive right. on a provisional licence? Yeah. OK, then I need to ask you the obvious question, what, why are you not adhering to that? Because I couldn't find anyone. OK, uh, unfortunately, 
if you can't find somebody, that doesn't give you an excuse to just say, I'm not, I'm not going to adhere to the, to the law. This driver has a Fijian driver's licence, which is only valid for one year in the UK, after which he has to apply for a provisional licence. Despite having done that, without a UK licence holding passenger to supervise him, it's not enough to avoid the police. At the moment, you don't have a licence to drive this vehicle on the road here. So I need to report you for the offence of driving on a highway. Um, unfortunately, as a result of that, um, I'm going to be seizing your vehicle. Serious? Yes, I am serious, because it's an offence and because you don't have a licence, that's the consequence of driving without a licence. The car's going to be recovered. You, you will be able to get your vehicle back. I, I obviously don't want to leave you... Um, I don't want to leave you stranded on the side of the road. Have you got anybody that can come and pick you up? Um, With the car seized, Steve is dispatched to pick it up. I think some people know that their vehicle's not legal and shouldn't be on the road. Some people, odd ones, are not aware. Yeah, it's the rules are the rules, isn't it? If you know, if you make a mistake, you just have to put your hands up and take the consequences. There was a second adult in the front passenger seat. Um, however, that person doesn't have uh, a full driving license either. Um, so effectively, because he hasn't got anybody supervising him, and um, we've recovered the vehicle, uh, and he will now be facing a penalty on his license of points and a fine uh, for driving otherwise in accordance. So, caught up with that one, another good result. A win for the police and for the car pound, but not for this motorist. Although he was able to retrieve his car, he faces a fine of up to £1,000, along with a maximum of six points on his licence. Caught again, he'd be looking at disqualification. OK, there's two things that we can do. Okay, The first thing is we arrest you. OK. Uh, and take you to a police station, or we conduct the interview here, all right? In Northampton, police have seized the car of an OAP who they now suspect is disqualified from driving. I'd rather we do the interview here with you instead of locking you up, OK? The police are using compassionate grounds to interview him at the roadside and avoid a trip to the station. So what we'd like you to do is come with us into the little van in there, so it's a bit private, OK? He's going to get interviewed now voluntarily uh, and sent on his way uh, and we'll seize the vehicle. Skoda, yeah. is that all you got here at the minute? Yeah. Steve's impounding the vehicle until the elderly driver can prove he has a valid licence and is fully insured. Just getting the police officers to fill the details out of the person that was driving it. We actually got hit by somebody that had no insurance. So we ended up having to claim on our insurance because that person wasn't insured. The ones that obviously drive around and know it's got no insurance, to be honest, they've got no sympathy for them. With a deadline of just 14 days to stop his car being crushed, this driver will be hard pushed to get the documents he needs in time. At the moment, he's incapable of getting his car back because he'd need a driving licence to do that. Um, He's disqualified, and given what's happened today, it would probably be unlikely that he'd get his licence back anyway. So unless he gets someone else to get the car back for him on his behalf, I'd probably say that car is more likely to be crushed in, in a month's time. Last year, over 5.2 million parking fines were issued across Britain generating over £55,000 of charges each day and keeping car pounds busy retrieving the vehicles of those who won't cough up. Though most of us pay our dues, there are some who feel they're above the law. Known as persistent evaders, these individuals have three or more penalty notices against their vehicle and can cost councils thousands of pounds. Tried catching it before. Yeah. So, hopefully. In Sheffield, parking control officers Lynn and Saftar have been tasked with removing and impounding one such vehicle that consistently parks illegally. To Roger, we'll see if you loud and clear. In the control room, Lisa and Tracy are coordinating the operation. Need to say these are still parked, so there's no extra To Roger, thanks for that. Control out. With the vehicle spotted, Lynn and Saftar are en route to hopefully remove it to the local car park. More often than gets a ticket, 
more or less every day, I think, if we've got somebody on that area. So it'll have double figures in my eyes. Fingers crossed, we'll be successful. There was a time when you could get 100 tickets before the authorities caught up with you. Now it's three, it's done, the message is sent out then. The vehicle was last seen almost an hour ago, so Lynn and Safdar are hoping it hasn't been shifted. The vehicle is not of the location that was uh, mentioned. Yeah, just be aware they do park it behind the fencing. Over. No problem. We'll give you the heads up. So that's the only fence in there. That's the Mercedes there. It's there. Despite finding the car, it must be violating parking regulations in order for it to be removed to the pound. 120 to control. Yeah, we found the vehicle. So if you can give me the heads up, whether we can still proceed or not, over. Yeah, does it have the glass area in our bath? Yeah, it's not on the footpath. It's behind some fencing, that's why we didn't see it. Can we still enforce this? Yeah, we can proceed. There's been no uh, effort of payment and it's got more than three cases over. Yes, yeah, Sir Roger, thank you for that information. With unpaid parking tickets on the system, the tow truck can now be dispatched to hopefully pull the car to the pound. Well, what could happen is the owner of the vehicle returns. And if they return, they're free to leave. Unfortunately, we can't stop them from doing that. So it's a bit of a waiting game, who turns up first. It's a bit of a cat and mouse game, so hopefully the cat will win today. Back in Northampton. Because they, this place, they don't help me. At the CMG pound, this frustrated man is in a race against time to get his insurance verified by the police so he can get his car released before it gets crushed. It's been a battle, but after hours at the pound and on the phone, there's finally some good news. My car is up to date, insurance, MOT, Rotax, and... He receives confirmation from the police that he can pay up and retrieve his car. Yeah, I'm very happy. But there's only one sure fire way to avoid a banged up vehicle. Well, the best way to get your car back is not have it taken in the first place. You know, check your insurance, check your tax, check your MOT, and even check your license, because your license does expire, you know? While the man drives away happy, a new customer enters the yard. Have a look at that vehicle, eh? They said he got bought tire. Taxi owner Bobby has arrived to collect his car that was recently seized by police from his employee. First, he said, go pull tire. And next thing, he said, oh, the driver hasn't got a full license. And next minute, they're taking the car. For, for, for what? And now, they book it in here for no insurance. It's fully insured. Whatever the reasons, the fact remains that Bobby's car is stuck behind bars. If he wants it, he'll have to pay up. It's all right, hello. Good. <laughs> Why are you coming today? Get to pick up my vehicle you like just took. Just took. Have you got your photo ID with you? Hopefully you can get it sorted. You look beautiful, don't you? Thank you. <laughs> I'll wrap it up in a minute. It would seem Bobby is trying to pick up more than his car. Can you get a sign to me if you can see taking a vehicle? Sign. Thank you. And you've got two tens paying in total. Where are you from? Where are you living? Where are you? Oh, is it far from here? Not really, no. With the bill paid, Bobby can now leave with his car. But sadly for him, not a phone number. Does that tire look, does that tire look bad? Yes, I got poor tire. The, tire is, the front tire is bad. Despite his sense of injustice, Bobby isn't keen to be stung again. So I'm going to try and um, take it down to the garage and get the tire sorted. Hopefully, we'll be in the good side of the law. And that's exactly what we, where we want to be, don't we? <laughs> With new tires, Bobby will be able to get his taxi safely back on the road and hopefully pay back some of his fees.
120 cash message. Up on the M1, Lynn and Safdar are hoping their tow truck arrives in good time. 120 hour. So they're just telling us that their ETA should be around 11.28, so within an hour. Let's just hope we don't have to wait too long. And on the 59th minute that the driver comes back. So fingers crossed, we'll get this one. It's very important to get these cars impounded. Firstly, the person who's had their car impounded, because that is the end result that they never thought would happen. And secondly, it's a very visual thing. So anybody else that may have got a parking ticket and they've just happened to walk by and seen this going on will think twice about not paying it. The PCN has now been issued and it's been authorised for removal, which means that there's been a yellow sticker put on the windscreen explaining that the vehicle's now going to be removed. And so we just have to wait now for that process to happen. They've, they've had many tickets, so they're just ignoring the rules and regs. They've also tried to obscure their own vehicles. That's reasons we are removing the vehicles, because we've had no payment from them, we've had no contact, you know what I mean? So this is just a form of pursuing it further and saying, we're not going to stand for it. We're not going to just let you park here willy-nilly when everybody else has got to abide by the rules. But with the tow truck still en route, their fears become reality as the owner of the vehicle arrives. Is this the lady? Hello. Is this your vehicle, up? Yes. We're afraid you can't park here, my love. You, can't, you can't park here. Uh, car is me. Yeah, the car's yours. But is there anybody that can understand what we're trying to explain to you? Because she's saying you don't understand and you don't speak English very good. 120 to control. Can you message over? Just want to give you a heads up. We have the driver that's come back out of the flats. We're having a language barrier at this moment in time. Struggling to communicate, Safdar tries his best to explain the situation to the owner. Understand? That's wrong. Can't park there. I speak, uh, it's OK. It's yeah, no it's not. It's not. Is that the landlord? The owner of the flat? No. Yeah. No. no, no, no. The place to park is across there. Sorry, I says this is the frustrating thing that it's just that waiting gear because now we can't stand down on the recovery service because the vehicle's still here. So I don't know what's happening. If the owner decides to shift her car before the removal process starts, there's nothing the officers can do to stop her. I think this may be him. It is, yeah. 120 to control. So Are you going to tell him to stand down or what? No, I've got to proceed. She's, She's not moved it, yeah, yeah. With the tow truck finally on scene, Lynn and Safdar need the car to be loaded quickly. We're still having translation problems here. If the car wants to carry on uh, removing over. There's a truck here that's going to take it. With the tow truck poised to strike, at the last minute, the lady moves the car. Not happy in respect because it's been there constant. So I think it's just playing the game. And it, it's frustrating, it's frustrating. I would like to think that she's um, sort of innocent in this. Yeah, no. Not understanding the rules and regulations. That. I mean, that car might not even be registered in her name. She might not be getting any of the letters or anything. We don't know. But it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. What can you do? Hopefully, she's got a bit more information, so hopefully she may resolve yeah. everything. You're All welcome. Right. Thank you. Yeah, we haven't got the removal, but hopefully it's a good result that the lady's going to get it all sorted and hopefully yeah. succeed and not do anything like that again. But yeah, so now we just plod on. Despite being issued 35 parking tickets, Lynn and Safdar leave empty-handed and disappointed. In Northampton, at the car pound, after a long day pulling in vehicles, driver and owner Steve's finally reunited with his wife and business partner, Maureen. You're back. I told him you'd left me. You ran off with a man down the road. Yeah, right. We met at your mum and dad's pub. Mum and dad's pub. We've been together now for 40 years. <laughs> but before they can go home, 
Steve needs to offload the car seized from the elderly driver and he suspects he's seen the vehicle before. I was getting a bit worried. I thought it might be... <laughs> but it's just someone that we know and Stephen recognised the car and said he thought it was his, but of course, looking on here, that is who it belongs to. He had an accident a good few years ago. He's only got one leg. He wouldn't have a clue, but... No, to look at. But unfortunately, it don't make any odds. You've still got to do exactly the same. It all goes onto the police computer. It's Pris. You go onto a finance page and it's all worked out for you. You tell them what day it came in and what day it goes out and it tells you what the bill is. You can't... There's no change in it for anybody. Driving whilst disqualified means that the car's owner is unlikely to get another licence. And if he can't get his car collected in 14 days, it will be fatal for the vehicle. Oh, stop! We don't get many regulars, but we do have the same person come back. Probably a different car, a different date, a different time, but sometimes we see a name on the paperwork and we just know who it is coming back, yeah. But this time, the car gets a reprieve. Two days later, the bill is paid and the vehicle is returned to its owner. Yeah, I was saying a month, but it may know, have been there a month a lot longer. Flies, it? So it could, have been, it could have been there two months. It might have been there quite a while. In Sheffield, Safdar is back on patrol with colleague Angie. I would put money on it still being there. They're hoping to remove another persistent evader that has been spotted to the north of the city centre. I think that's it there. 189 to control, receiving over. 189, that's your message. Yeah, Roger, we have got a persistent evader. Would you please find out if we can remove this vehicle over? Roger, do you want to tell me the details, over? Yep, it's a Vauxhall Astra in silver. Yeah, that's Roger, stand by. So you're just running a check on this on this vehicle to see if we can remove it. We just need to make sure that we can, legally. Yeah, this car in particular has had a lot of tickets. I don't know how many, but um, there were a fair amount on there when I came across it and put another ticket on it. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit surprised to see it here. But um, nothing we can do once it falls under that bracket of persistent evader and we're here, then it has to be lifted. Control to 189. Go ahead, over. Yeah, we're going to proceed with that one. Um, we'll let you know as soon as um, we've got any further information on arrival of um, the recovery service, over. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you for that. 189 out. There were quite a few tickets on it, on the windscreen. Uh, so yeah, tickets have been removed from it by someone. Don't know whether it's the owner or not. But if it is the owner, they've taken no notice of them and just left it there. So it's fair game. Have you got an ETA over? Yeah, uh, roughly about another half hour over. Yeah, that's a Roger thing. It's an all too familiar story for Safda. The recovery team are driving to the scene as quickly as possible, but he knows it may not be soon enough. Waiting for the recovery truck to come can be a bit frustrating. You want it to be resolved as quick as possible, whether it's the driver coming back or the car being removed. Uh, I prefer the second one to occur. The car's gone, you're gone. There's no chance of uh, any altercation. Have you checked to see if it's got tax or MOT? No, no, I haven't. It's out of interest. I think it belongs to someone. No. Tax and MOT'd. Is it? Yep. So it belongs to someone then, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Still a chance someone may come. It may not look like it, but you could be in the middle of nowhere and then someone will just appear. With the car doors locked, there's no way of releasing the handbrake. But that's not an obstacle for the recovery driver won't take long at all with that. Hey. This gets dragged up, doesn't it? Pretty good, isn't it? So those little bits of plastic. Help it being, uh, well, help it to slide along. Yeah. Pretty cool, Amazing. really. 
about 50 pence each. Well, there's two wheels. Let's get the next two on. You can breathe a sigh of relief. Well, it's a shame, Andrew, isn't it? It's a shame. But it has to, to be, be done. done. It has to be done. After receiving three tickets, the car is finally moved from the Sheffield streets to behind bars, much to the relief of the car pound cops. I think it's more apprehension, you know, just worrying in case somebody does come back and starts being rather aggressive, especially more so when it gets on the back of that wagon. Once it's on and he's, he's drove away, that's it, I'm happy. It's a great relief to see it go without any, any aggravation, anyone coming back. It is annoying if you're here, let's say, for an hour, yeah. waiting for them to turn up and then One for the last second the owner of the vehicle returns and then it's all in vain, it's, it's all for nothing. But road, this time it wasn't. So, yeah, 1-0. Um, so far. Next time. Tempers fray when Terry has to put the brakes on. No one gives you the right to spray my van. This is my property. Okay, listen. And a council clamps down on car crime. This is what I think of parking tickets. They are going to be able to tow them away, so I don't think he thinks we're going to do it, but we will. <laughs>